Hi guys, we are now live. So it's about a minute. So I'm just gonna give everyone a minute to get in and to start the live stream. So I'm super excited you guys are here. Um, I'm actually in California right now. Hi Cheryl. Um, I'm in California right now. Hi. Hi guys. Oops. A little technical difficulty. I think I'm just gonna hold it. I had a stand and I just popped my phone out. So that might not be good. Yeah, let me just try this again. Sorry. So I hope everyone's doing great. I'm in California right now in my parents' backyard. And I don't know if you can hear their birds singing in the back, so it's quite nice. Um, it's really nice to be home for the summer, just hang out with my family and say hello. Hi. Hi, Simply Stage, Phoenix. Uh, hi, Gonzalez Nieto. I'm really sorry if I'm butchering your name, guys. So thank you so much for coming on the live stream. I'm super excited. Composition is one of my favorite things to geek out on. And actually, when I first studying in undergraduate, I actually had a art history major. Um, and I thought art theory was like the boringest thing. Like I hated design theory. I'm not a really big on theory person. But then once I start working um, in photography, like I was working as a prop assistant, I really start seeing why composition was important. And then now I'm working as a photographer, it's even more important because one of the things I've learned actually in through photography is that if you want to be a storyteller, if you want your image to be really strong, composition is really the number one key thing you need to learn as a photographer and as a stylist, um, because that's really gonna help you to create different elements in the photos to really help you uh, make the focal point pop, which is what we do in staging as well, and also in visual merchandising. So it's really, really important for, I think, for design professional to understand why composition is very important and then also how we can leverage design theories and different design elements into our work. Because one of the things I think is really difficult for Stager is that we don't have a physical store. It's not like people can come to a retail store and check us out. So we really have to rely heavily on our portfolio. It's a really strong lead generation tool for us. So it's really, really important that your portfolio looks on point and it's very tight. And so the composition has to be really great. And by having stronger composition in your work, it's also gonna help you attract better clients as well. Because the more edited, the more curated your work is gonna look, you're more likely gonna attract higher end clients who really focus on the design aspect of things. So that's why I think it's really important for us design professionals or anyone who works in image in storytelling, really focus on the composition aspect of things. Yeah, so I want to share with you a quote. I have my cheat sheet down here. That's why I'm not looking down, sorry. Um, but one of the things I learned when I was studying composition, uh, I came across this quote I thought really put it together very well. So it says, composition is a way of guiding viewers' eyes toward the most important elements of your work, sometimes in a very specific order. So when we're using different design theory, like using rhythm, for example, to create implied movement in the space, because when we are presenting our photos online, it's a two-dimensional medium. It's not like people are standing in the room, they're not seeing everything, so they're not getting all the information. So it's really important for us to be able to tell, to give them those clues when they're seeing the photographs. And so they can read the room, they can understand what context this room is, and to be able to really get a really good understanding what this house is about and why they should buy this house. So everything we do really is layered. So a lot of times, this is what really bothers me with clients sometimes, because sometimes clients really focus on hiring a really great movers, but they don't really focus on hiring a great stager. Because we're not just movers, we everything we do has a design element into it. There's a strategic move behind everything that we do. The placement we have in terms of accessories, in terms of furniture, the way we use colors, they're all strategic ways to help our clients sell their house, to tell the story of the house. So that's why I think composition is very important when it comes to 
building that different layers and make the, um, the, the room feel richer and more in depth to really attract the potential buyers for our clients. And a good composition can help make a masterpiece even out of the dullest objects and subjects in the plainest environment. So that's why I think composition is magical because it can really help you achieve all these different things. And the other great things about learning design theory is that once you know all the rules, you can break them and you can put your own spin on it. So it's not very, because I think a lot of times when people teach like traditional design theory, it's very like cookie cutter in a way. Like, oh, you should hang the photo at 60 inch you know, from the bottom up or something like that. It's like a lot of different rules and, and sometimes it feels very stiff. And I think now, especially with the way millennials have influenced our buying habits, uh, influencing the way visual are being interpreted nowadays, I think we can be much looser than that. Um, and also like staging used to be very, you know, like staging is staging. We're not incorporating any sort of styling element into it or interior design element into it. But now I feel like that line is getting blurred. You're definitely seeing more design um, into staging as well, like having more personality into staging. And a lot of it has to do with demographics. So as a stager, one of the biggest most important job that we do is a we need to figure out who is buying this house right so we need to do a lot of homework a lot of research on demographic so we need to figure out what exactly is going on what like what motivates this buyer to buy what is the color story that they really enjoy what are some of the lifestyle elements they really feel is important like for example, nowadays, when people are updating outlets, I'm seeing a trend, people are adding these USB outlets as well. So not only people can plug in with a regular plug, they can also just plug in the USB cable to charge your electronics, whether it's a tablet or like a face massager or your smartphone. So those are different trends as stagers that we need to really um, like pay attention to, like what are some of the trends that are coming into the neighborhood that we're working at. So doing your homework as a home stager is incredibly important. And the other biggest part of our job is really to be able to, so to sell the house silently through composition, through design, and just through really building an interior that really makes people feel very welcoming. And one of the great things about design theory, I think, is that it really tap into the science part of selling. Because a lot of times we talk about buyer psychology, for example, like why is it so important to have a harmonious interior? It's because it puts people at ease and make them feel comfortable immediately. So when we walk into a room, we see something that's off balance or something is really bothering us, but we don't know exactly what, it turns us this way. I, I mean, that's an automatic kind of reaction. So it's really important for us to build a space when people come in, they just feel immediately, oh, this is home. This is, I love this space. I want to be in this space. I want to buy this space, right? So a lot of different design theory, like we talk about balance and visual weights, those are different tools that we can use to build a very harmonious, harmonious uh, interior. And the other thing too, design theory is in our everyday life. We actually grow up with it. So I'm sitting in my parents' backyard, there's nature surrounding me and it's very harmonious. There's lots of great air and I feel great. And why is that? Because green is a color that ultimately puts people at ease. It's the color of nature. And even within one tree, like there's different shades of green, there's different variations, different tones, different shapes. And um, symmetry, for example, when we look at a flower, we feel very harmonious. Why is that? We feel very at ease. We feel like it's beautiful. We really enjoy it. Why is that? It's because the petals, they're all similar shapes. It's a repetition of shapes together that builds that harmonious nature with colors, with different uh, shapes and different lines. Those are things that trigger us to feel good. So that's why design theory really works. And especially when you have a tricky floor plan, for example. So a lot of times people ask me, what do I do if there's say the fireplace is in the corner or this room, it's like an awkward shape. 
my first question, my first answer is always like, what is the focal point of this room? You want to always build your design plan of the room around that focal point because it's really, really important for us to tell our viewers, our buyers, what they are looking at in this room. When they're looking at photos online, they have no information. Like most of the time, like the caption would just say great living room or cozy dining area. It's not going to say a whole lot in terms of the floor plan, um, in terms of how the house flows. So this is why the other thing too, it's like expectations, right? We always talk about when we're working with clients, we need to manage your expectation. It's the same way with buyers. We have to manage your expectations. You don't want them to feel like, oh, this, this house looks absolutely amazing. And then when they walk into the space, they feel like it's a bit of a letdown, right? So it's really, really important to do that silently through your photographs, through your portfolio, through your work, because all that stuff is gonna make you feel, I'm sorry, make you build a tighter portfolio, a stronger portfolio, that's really gonna attract the ideal clients that you want. And ultimately, our brains respond to things that sometimes we don't even know consciously. And this is why by leveraging these design theory and co composition principle is really going to help you pull the space together. And ultimately, remember, we are not just stagers, we're storyteller. We are not just glorified furniture mover. Anyone can move furniture. My, my sister can move furniture. My 10 year old nephew can move furniture. I mean, everyone can do that, but to, to be able to build an interior that really attracts potential buyers and speak to them, that's skills. And so when the clients come to you and say, I don't understand why this costs so much, it has to do with your experience, with your ability to put the space together. And your portfolio is the best way to really prove that. Sorry, there's a garbage truck on the street. That's why it's so noisy in the background, um, but it will go pretty fast. So more than 90% of home buyers today view houses online and same with their clients. Most of the time your clients may see your home that you're staged on the open house, that's great. But most of the time people are gonna go to your website and look at your portfolio. And this is why by understanding how composition works from both a styling standpoint and also from a photographer standpoint, it's really important. And this is why once I start working as an interior photographer, I started to focus more and more um, to figure out what is the best composition to put this room together, not only from a stylist point of view, but also from a photographer point of view. Because I think both of them together is really gonna make your portfolio stronger. Because not only when you get photos back from the photo uh, photographers, you can also uh, edit your photos or like recrop them to make the composition stronger. Because most of the time, when people shoot real estate listings, it's more from a documentary point of view. Like they're documenting what exactly is in this room. So most photographers are using wide angles. They're not doing a lot of detail shots maybe. They're not maybe doing a lot of vignettes. So it's also always really good that you have your own photographer or a photographer you work for a long time that maybe the clients use, but you two in a way work together and you tell them what kind of some of the detail shots or maybe like a medium shots that you want to make your portfolio richer. I really strongly highly re recommend you to work with a professional photographer, um, especially, I mean, it's fine if you take your own photos for inventory purpose. If you know how to take photographs, like using manual mode, shooting in raw, and understanding the exposure triangle, if you know these three things I just talked about, you can shoot your own photo and you're probably gonna be fine. And um, there's lots of different apps you can use to edit your photos nowadays. Um, whether it's paid or for free. Like Lightroom, for example, like you can download that for free on your phone. And so that can be an easy way to start editing your photo and start learning how to maybe, you know, different compositions to make the, the portfolio stronger. So those are different tools at your disposal that you can use on social media, on your website to really showcase your portfolio. So online buying behavior is incredibly important nowadays because as we know, most of our buyers are online, not only our clients, but also potential home buyers as well. And this is why it's really, really important for them to understand visually what exactly they're looking at. So I think this is why when we talk about composition design theory, 
you not only want to look from a styling point of view, but also from a photographer point of view. So tomorrow, we are going to talk about design theory. So I'm going to talk about the most important ones, I think, in terms of staging. And um, they're really easy to achieve, like balance, for example. We all know what balance is. Uh, a lot of it has to do with visual weight as well. Like, for example, I have, uh, let me see. Um, like, for example, if you think about feather and uh, like a piece of metal, for example, like immediately we think the feather is lighter, right? But if I say I have a kilo bag of feather versus a 500 gram of metal, but if you just look at it visually, you'll still feel like the metal is heavier simply because of the visual weight. So those are different things that are easy to achieve for us to really build an interior that is harmonious and balanced. So tomorrow I'm going to talk about harmony. This is the, probably the most important thing you need to achieve when you're building the room together. Because when the room is harmonious, it will feel, it will make people feel at ease. That's naturally how our brain functions. If something is a bit off, like we will feel tense. I mean, you see this in film all the time. Um, this is why also I say design theory is all around us because we are bombarded with uh, marketing messages all day, whether it's on our computer, a flat, you know, a print image. That garbage truck is really making its round. Anyway, so, um, and then also in movies and TV shows as well. I mean, all these design concepts come into play. So harmony, harmony is really important when it comes to putting the design, putting the room together. And that can be achieved through symmetry and balance. And so we're going to talk about those tomorrow. And then the other thing that's really important is we need to create depth. So our eyes is three dimensional. When we walk into a space, immediately we can tell, okay, that tree is right in front of me. That chair is behind the tree. There is a very, like easy i mean our eyes just naturally it's like magic it can tell the different depths of different objects how far away they're from us but when it comes to photography it's different because photograph is a two-dimensional object so what it does is it flattens the scene out so that's why it's really really important to understand how we can build depth in our portfolio photos because by having different depth and different layers, it's gonna make the interiors feel richer and more attractive to people. And the other thing too is that before I start working as a home stager, I actually was a buyer's agent. And I was in a huge brokerage. Like this uh, broker had five different offices and combined he has a couple hundred agents under him. And he started out as a buyer's agent. And one of the things he always trained us is to to observe buyers behaviors when we're in the house. So one of those things that buyers always do when they when they when my broker knows that they're going to put in the offer is when they start touching the house a lot. Not only they're going to stay longer, but they're going to look at really all the different details in the house. Like they may touch the hardware, they might touch the kitchen cabinet, they're going to really check out the space inside the cupboards, inside the closet. And you can just tell that they're standing in the room and they're already planning how to move in mentally. And so that's one of the important cues that tells buyer's agent that the buyer is really interested in this house and they should put in an offer ASAP. And so that's why what we do in terms of styling and staging, we really need to create all these different things, create all these visual interests to make the buyer stay in the house as long as possible because it's going to help them really stay in the space help them visually move in or mentally move in and it's going to help them to feel like this is really the home for me to buy and that's really our job it's to really help it's really to help the buyers make that decision that this is the right house for them to buy and that's why everything that we do every furniture placement every accessories needs to be a calculated decision and that's why the client's going to pay us big bucks to do it because we can help them get that result and the last thing we're going to talk about is creating implied movement in your work. So most of the time when people look at portfolio, it's a two-dimensional image. So people don't understand how they can move around in the space. And so within your portfolio, I mean, with listing photos, you don't really have any control because the real estate agent is going to 
most likely upload whatever photos they like. Like we have no control of that. But for your own portfolio, you can do that. You can tell the story, how you bring the space and make it come to life. And so we're gonna talk about implied movement and then different ways of built movement into the scene. And so all these were gonna to come together and help you create a stronger focal point. So ultimately, all these design series we're learning, and even we're, I'm gonna talk about photography composition as well. Um, like in photography, we talk about leading line a lot and different perspective of viewing, viewing the room. I mean, all these things is gonna to come together and help you build a stronger focal point. Ultimately, the photo of the listing photos or your portfolio photo is to inform the potential buyers what exactly they're buying into. So I think it's really important to create image that is really easy to quote unquote read for the potential buyers so they understand what exactly you're selling. So I'll be talking about these concepts in today, tomorrow's live stream. And I'm also gonna put a recap of today on a Instagram post and also in the Facebook page as well. And if you don't follow us on Facebook or on Instagram yet, it's just really simple. It's our company name is Stage for More. So, all right, so that's the content I have today. Does anyone have any questions or comments that I can answer today? I just noticed there's like a weird bump on my hair. <laughs> so anything, any comments? I'm just gonna scroll through the comments here really quickly. Yes, demographic research is so important. So La Gonzalez Nieto, is that how I say it? It's, it's correct, that's very, very important. It's all about demographic nowadays. And thank you guys for waving. This is so nice. Okay, so if there's any more, there's no more questions, I'm gonna end the live stream today. But as usual, if you're watching this on a later time on a replay, feel free to comment on the Instagram post or comment on the Facebook post and I'll answer your question there. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. Oh wait, I have one question here. Uh, Jen, will you be explaining exposure triangle? No, but I can tell you right now what exposure triangle is. So when you're taking camera, when you're looking in your camera, there's aperture, there's ISO, which has to do with the sensitivity of uh, light for the sensor. And then, um, and then what is it? Fo uh, aperture, ISO, and then shutter speed. So all these threes form the exposure triangle. So the camera is really modeled after our eye. So if you look at aperture, it's basically how wide your eye is open because the wider your eye is, the more light it lets in. And so when you're shooting a very dark place, for example, you should open up your aperture to let more light in and to have longer exposure time because it's basically a sensor. So if you think about it, camera shutter is basically a screen. So you have the sensor in the back, that's your film or your digital sensor. And then when the shutter opens, it lets the light in. And then it basically records the light and then the image. So that's why when you're shooting in darker places, you might need to adjust your ISO, which is also how sensitive the sensor is. And today the machines are very advanced. I mean, my, I think Sony and I, I shoot with Sony mirrorless and then also with Canon 5D Mark IV. I mean, the ISO goes up to 32,000. Most of the time I don't use it that much at all because the higher the ISO is, the grainier your photo is gonna look. So if you really want a sharp photo, you want to always have as much light as possible when you're shooting. So that's basically the quick down and dirty explanation on exposure triangle. Um, but basically to achieve the great exposure is basically has to do with how you combine the three elements and also what kind of effects that you want to do. So for example, ISO, the higher ISO is, the grainier the photo is going to be. When you have a higher aperture, it's going to, uh, it's going to change the depth of field in, uh, in your photo. And so if I, so I, if I shoot at aperture 2.8 versus 16, with 16, you're gonna see the background very clearly. With 2.8, it's gonna be a bit blurry in the background. That's what we call bokeh in the, in the photography term. So those are different ways for you to combine different um, techniques to really create the exposure and create the effect that you want. So that's a really quick, quick explanation on exposure triangle. Um, books you recommend in composition. So composition is actually nothing new. Like, 
a lot of our theory books uh, will explain composition because before photography, we had paintings. And so a lot of like, you know, Renaissance painters, for example, they all incorporate different composition techniques. And most of the time it has to do with focal point. So with focal point in interior as well, a lot of times we may have different multiple focal point in one room, like say a living room, you may have a really great, awesome view, but you also may have a fireplace, especially if you're in an older historical home, architecture details is very important but the focal point can shift. So for example, in the summer, fireplace is not gonna be a very strong focal point because it's gonna be hot. No one wants to be in front of a fireplace. So the view instead is gonna be the primary focal point. And so when you're staging, you really have to think about different layers that comes into a room. So you really obviously you wanna highlight the main focal point of the room, and then but you still want to put some emphasis on the secondary uh, focal point you may have in the room. So when you're looking at books for composition, I would say just look at a lot of like um, art theory type of books. Those are gonna help. And you can also search for, like I'm a big photo composition nerd and I read uh, photo theory as well. And so those are, I mean, those are things, they're more like theory based though, so a bit boring. But I think with interiors, um, I'll do some research and then I'll see what I can find. Um, in terms of composition books. Great. Oh, and you say pronunciation on point. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And then, so, oh, we have someone rec uh, comment at uh, Palham Group Northwest. Uh, really looking forward to all the training this week. Thank you. So I'm really looking forward to doing live stream. So please guys, if you have any questions, feel free to bring on, on the live streams and also uh, you can comment on the post later on as well. I would love to answer all your questions. I think it's a really great way for me. I'm really, I'm actually really introverted. I feel uncomfortable doing live streams, but it's a really great way for me to understand what you guys are looking for. And really, it's nice to get to interact with you guys actually. So, so yeah. Um, yes, Creative Live has great photography course. I take, um, you can also watch a lot of Creative Live courses for free. You just need to join their mailing list and then there will pop up like saying what are some of the free um, classes you can watch today. And so I actually watch a lot of different composition and also color theory as well. Um, courses on Creative Live. I mean, even with Illustrator, for example, when they're depicting a scene in a graphic novel. I mean, that is all about leading lines, focal point. I mean, they're using colors to really help people travel, like like um, for their eyes to travel. I mean, that's one of the things that's really important in composition because when you're looking at a photograph, um, an image or anything, or even a room, like in person, people's eyes do travel. So you have to figure out ways for people to be able to travel towards that focal point. And that's why all this design theory comes into play and it's very important. Um, and yes, lighting is very important. Um, it's all about lighting. We're naturally attracted to natural light. And this is why when I'm staging, if privacy is not an issue, I usually don't put a lot of cur like I don't put a lot of window treatment unless the client really specified they want it and I put in shears because ultimately I know sometimes when the listing agents are doing open houses or showing agents, they may not open all the windows, they may not open all the curtains, but if you have shears, you can still let light in. So, so that's it. So thank you guys for being on the live stream. I'm super excited. So I am going to download the video and upload them soon. And then you can watch the recap or read the recap of what we talk about today. So that's it. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.